Welcome to church, everyone. Welcome as we come together on this, the Lord's Day. It is a beautiful day, and I'm so glad to see each of you here. Thank you to those who are joining us online. Uh, welcome to Door Village Church. I'm Pastor Sam Polito. Uh, it's a good day to be here uh, together. Uh, I do have a number of announcements in the life of the church, things that we need to know about. Uh, first announcement, right out of the gate, choir practice will begin September 13th. Now, can you believe it's September already, first of all? <laughs> We're in September, and then the 13th is coming up quick. Wednesday at 6.30 on the 13th, choir will begin rehearsing. I uh, want to talk a little bit uh, about next uh, Sunday. Uh, next weekend is Harvest Festival here across the street. And uh, if you're making baked goods, uh, bring them for the sale. Uh, you can bring them to the church Friday afternoon or take them to the bake sale tent Saturday morning. Uh, Friday is fine, though, if you want to bring them by the church. And uh, don't forget to bring your lawn chairs next Sunday. We will not be here in the sanctuary. We will be out at the gazebo uh, for an outdoor worship service. So bring a lawn chair with you and then also bring someone with you, maybe. Um, here's the thing. We'll be out there uh, in a live uh, service, but we will not be online next Sunday. Uh, we won't be broadcasting next Sunday. So if you want to be here, those of you online, come over to Door Village next Sunday morning and uh, join us for the Harvest Fest festivities, especially our outdoor worship service. Uh, Number announcement, uh, Joyce Marhenka is organizing volunteers to run this year's New Day Corn Maze, and that's out at Coulter's Pumpkin Fest. Uh, two volunteers are needed for each shift. There's a 10 to 2 shift and a 2 to 6 shift each weekend uh, from uh, September 23rd and then through October. If you can help, please uh, see Joyce. And join us for a time of fellowship in the parlor after service. Stick around for just a moment and uh, visit a little bit. Uh, if you would like to bring the refreshments for uh, after church, there is a sign-up sheet. And uh, let's, let's uh, rotate through a number of people doing that. So if you haven't done it yet, uh, there's a chance for you to take your turn. <clears throat> I do have an announcement from our nominations committee. We are... Uh, working hard to fill some open positions in the life of the church for next year's uh, slate of officers. If we call you, it's because the church needs you. Uh, it, it's just that simple. If we ask and it's just not your thing, that you, you don't want to do that particular uh, thing, uh, or if it's just not possible, we, we understand that. Um, but something I was handing out as people came in, there's more on the... Uh, greeters table are an interest survey and there you can uh, just show your interest in something you're not signing up to do it uh, if you mark an interest in it but it helps us know who to call for what when we are planning something uh, there's uh, wonderful different things on there a movie night and trivia night uh, we'd like to try out there's vacation bible school if you've helped with vacation bible school in the past and would like to help maybe uh, or have children that are interested in Vacation Bible School, please do mark that so we know, and then we can get that, that going. I heard wonderful stories uh, of old of baking and selling pies at the fairgrounds. Some of you here were those that baked those pies. Someone told me that there was a potluck uh, that uh, they, they were plucking chickens, and somebody's job was getting the pin feathers out of those chickens. Can you imagine? That was back in the day. There's, there, uh, so many shared about the beef and noodle dinners being the specialty of the church. Uh, without you, what I'm going to say through nominations is nothing happens without you stepping up and saying, I will help with that. But the interest survey is just if there's an interest, we'll, we'll try to go ahead with that particular thing. We need to build new traditions as well so there's a place at the bottom if you have any new ideas 
um, now, now that we're in a place where we can hold events, let's just find some new ways to tell people uh, that, that we love them and Jesus loves them and share the love of Christ. The September newsletter, you received your interest form, uh, so fill that out and get it back to us. I want to hear from everyone. It's not a matter of I'm not interested in any of that. The idea is what area is some way that you will connect with the church in the coming year? Uh, uh, new to the church, those new to the church, those who have been here and are founders of the church, I want to hear from you, your ideas uh, to be active in the life of the church. So if, if you didn't get a survey from me as you came in, they're on the table, pick it up. Uh, what you indicate on the survey becomes part of uh, what we're doing today. So uh, uh, try that. Uh, are there any other announcements in the life of the church? Yes, I have some more announcements here. Uh, senior breakfast is this Wednesday. We're in a new month. So uh, first Wednesday is September 6th, 8 a.m. Christos. Uh, just stop by and share breakfast with us. And then Saturday, September 9th, men's breakfast. Uh, we'll be meeting here. No, we'll be meeting across the street uh, at the Door Village Shelter at 8 a.m. Uh, to, to share with those who are gathering the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, so if, if you're men, meet across the street. Any other announcements that we need to know? I do have one here. Door Village Lions. It's time for a Hacienda give back. Mark your calendars October 9th, so in just about a month or so. Uh, gift card sign up are available. If you want to buy the gift cards uh, ahead of time, we'll get those to you and it will count towards the Door Village Lion C. Cindy Fisher at the greeters table. Now I'm going to ask any other announcements. Let me put these on so I can see you. Okay, I see Dennis. Nope, I see Sue. Uh, trustees, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Wednesday, trustees, 6 p.m. Thank you, thank you. I'm just, I'm just going to say this. I'm looking out over the congregation. And for a holiday weekend, for Labor Day weekend, you showed up for church. You did. And I'm so very grateful. Uh, we make choices in our lives on where to be and what to do. And when you choose the Lord to honor him and worship him, you're making a, a good choice in your life. I just want you to know that. And thank you for doing that today. I appreciate it. Let's uh, bow our heads in a word of prayer to begin. Lord, we choose you. But only because you first chose us, you chose to love us. God, you so loved the world, you gave us your son, Jesus. And whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. One day, to be with you in heaven will make all of this worthwhile. We give you thanks and praise. In his name we gather. Amen, amen. Say amen, everyone. Good morning, church. Our call to worship this morning is found on the screen. The way is difficult, the road is long. I will follow Jesus. The cross is heavy to bear. I will follow Jesus. The decision is ours to make. I have decided to follow Jesus. Stand if you are able for our hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus.
You may be seated. In order to be in prayer for one another, we need to know how to be in prayer for one another. And so uh, at this time, we'll ask for uh, those prayer concerns. But it's also joys and concerns then. So we want to um, encourage one another in the Lord in, in some way. Just be grateful to the Lord for something is appropriate. Joys and concerns. Right here, Lloyd. Doctors did the job, but the Lord did his job. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I see, yeah, Pam. Um, Prayer for Pam Kievert's mom, uh, Marlene, Marlene. Rick's mom, I'm sorry. I see you, Tom. For all those that help, uh, Tom and Beverly are so grateful. I, I just feel we need to praise the Lord about something. Somebody give a thanks and praise to God. Yeah, George. Okay. Prayer for Joe Paz having surgery uh, tomorrow. We'll keep Joe in prayer. Thank you. Somebody a praise for the Lord? Beautiful day the Lord has made. Yes, let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're God's people. Let, let's praise the Lord together. Are you grateful you're in church? Say Amen. Are you thankful Jesus died for your sins? Say amen. 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 There's always, a, uh, always rightful, joyful, everything, always heard to give thanks and praise to God Almighty. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Uh, let, let's have silent prayer now. That's just you and God. Just take a moment and make that connection. Think about, uh, think about God and uh, approach, uh, approach God, and then we'll pray together. First silent prayer. When we have fallen down, you help us stand again. When we have sinned, we ask your forgiveness. And where there is joy in our life, we know the source of that joy is always you. Hear us, hear our prayers, Lord. Uh, Thanksgiving from from Lloyd, his procedure uh, did the trick, and we're grateful for that. For uh, Rick Kievert's mom, Marlene, our prayers are with her. Tom and Bev, uh, able to make it to church. It, it takes some, some great effort, but uh, it's, it means so much to them to be able to be in church. 
our prayers for Joe Paz and his surgery tomorrow, even now, tonight, let the doctors and nurses receive the rest they need to be at their very best for the surgery. And then just, just thanksgiving to you, God. You are always good, always willing to help. So very forgiving, so very loving, so very kind, compassionate. That is who you are. And help us to be those very same things in our lives towards others. Help us to love as you have loved. Help us to forgive as you have forgiven. Help us to pray as you have prayed. As we pray together the Lord's Prayer using trespasses, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, time for our youngest ones to come forward at this time. If you're here and you'd like to come up, just, just come visit with us for a little bit. There you go. Here's two here. Here's two here. Hi, Lucy. Let's... Hi, yeah, come on up. Now, when I was your age, we used to play some games. Do you ever play some games? Yeah. You run around outside and you do some... What are some games you play? Yeah? Tag. That's a fun game. Yeah, tag. I like going down the slides. That's always fun to do. Do you ever get to the swings? I do too, yeah. We had to run real fast because there were only four swings and there were 20 kids heading for those four swings. So I had to run fast to get a swing. There were other games we played. One we used to play was called Monkey See, Monkey Do. Monkey See, Monkey Do. And my one friend would always go, whoo, 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 monkey. And so we'd act like a monkey for a little bit. And then uh, they'd turn around, and we'd have to turn around. You know, it was uh, Monkey See, Monkey Do. Now, another name for that game is Follow the Leader. And that game is so much fun because where the leader goes, you go. So if they run over to the slide, you would run over to the slide. But if then they would go over to the teeter-totter, uh, do they have teeter-totters anymore? I think they took them out at all the playgrounds. Yeah, I, see, I hear some yeses over from the kids here. Um, so wherever the leader would go, you would go. Now, I like to think about Jesus as our leader. And where he goes and what he does, we should do and we should. Now, if, if, let's play a little game of follow the leader. And first thing I'm going to do is raise my hands in the air. And that is what we do when we praise the Lord. We just say, praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let's put our hands like this. And what does that mean when we have our hands like this? What are we doing? Praying. We're praying. Okay, and that's the follow the leader with Jesus is we praise the Lord and we pray to the Lord, and we have a prayer to pray together with the Lord. It's on the screen, and would you join us in praying this prayer together? And you pray this prayer too. Uh, just listen for it, and then you can pray the prayer with us, okay? Ready? Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart this day. Let me hear the kids saying amen. Amen. <laughs> and you're out of here. You can head on out. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. I, I know I say this every now and again, but somebody did something right this morning in having kids here in church. Do you know what I'm saying? And that happens when you purpose in your heart to bring the young ones. So there are different ways, different people 
that you can invite to bring young ones to church. It's why we're here, to share Jesus, pour the love of Jesus into their little lives so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. Train up the little children, yes, yes. Now, uh, hear this morning's invitation to share. As I said on the greeters table, there was a uh, sign-up sheet of sort, an interest form is what I called it, and it, we just want to know together what we're going to be doing as a church. So uh, as part of the offering today, I want you to present that interest form at the uh, uh, greeters table as, as you leave from here. Don't delay, don't, don't put it off, don't uh, don't leave it laying there on the kitchen table and just not do it. Fill it out, turn it in, share your best ideas. At the bottom, there's a place to write in something, some way that you'll connect with the church in a very real way, some idea or uh, for here at the church, or even better yet, some activity out in the community that we can do as a church. You don't have to run the event. Uh, all we're asking is to suggest uh, something that we can do as a church. Just share your ideas, show interest, and from there we'll, we'll build a team and make things happen together. There's more to church than coming on a Sunday morning, and part of that is making a commitment, a commitment to the Lord. And part of the ways we can commit is come up with the idea in the first place. Let's uh, stand for the doxology. More than what we've just placed in this offering plate, Lord, we offer ourselves in, in praise and in service to you. We offer who we are, that this church might represent you to the world, that others might come to know the love and salvation that is in your name. Let this offering be used for that purpose through us. We pray this in your holy name. To that, all God's children, say an amen. Say amen, everyone. Amen. And you may be seated. Something beautiful. Something good. All my confusion He understood All I had to offer Him Was brokenness and strife But He made something Beautiful out of my life If there ever were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. And the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortune turned to loss so I wrapped it all in the rags of my life and I laid it on the cross something beautiful something good all my confusion he understood all I had to offer him was
was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life. Yes, he made something beautiful out of my life. Thank you, George. This morning's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to the disciples he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priest and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is coming in his Father's glory with angels, and he will re reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. It, it happens every now and again. Um, today's sermon almost writes itself. Uh, three things. It, it, it's right there in the verses. It, it comes down to three action words. Uh, taken in succession, they give us a, a, a road map for discipleship. It's, it's all about following, following Jesus. First step, deny Self, deny yourself. It's easy to say, but hard to do. In, in our Christian faith, there is a practice we often overlook, and usually I emphasize it during the season of Lent. But any time of the year is important for this practice. It's fasting. Fasting is hungering and thirsting for more than the pleasures of this life. It's, it's, fasting is denying yourself and waiting on the Lord. To deny yourself, to keep from acting on the desires of the flesh, it's learning to resist temptation. Uh, giving up sweets is a popular item to give up during Lent. But, but anything that you simply can't resist makes an excellent place to start. Deny yourself. Self-denial. I came across an interesting take on self-denial. It entails taking the needs of others into account before taking your own needs into account. Not self but think of others. Deny yourself. Care for others. What you deny for yourself frees up that time, that, that money, 
that can then be donated or given to those in need. To fast is to do without something. The practice in biblical times and even today is called alms, giving alms to the poor or simply giving to those in need. While, while working on this sermon, I, I became very aware that I really truly have every whim or every desire I have filled. I, I, I have all that I need and, and even all that I want. There is a sense of contentment that comes to mind. Be content with what you have, the Bible says. But then, then I realized, too, that there are, there are bellies that are not filled. People short of food, short of money, short of hope. So in denying ourselves, we can then meet some of those needs of others. I, I saw today that the table that we've been collecting food for Salvation Army has filled to full again. And we'll keep doing that uh, through the month of September. The focus for this September is breakfast items. We did peanut butter last month. If you want to bring more peanut butter, they'll always receive that. But this month, it's breakfast items. So that's, that could be a number of different items. Uh, it, it could be cereal, Pop-Tarts, breakfast bars. It could be uh, uh, other things that would be appropriate for breakfast. When Jesus said, deny yourself, I believe it meant going way beyond fasting, beyond uh, practicing self-control. Jesus was talking about giving up the right to our very lives for the sake of the gospel. Jesus was saying, this is going to cost you everything that is the self-denial that jesus was talking about first deny yourself and second take up your cross even greater a sacrifice than self-denial is taking up a cross self-denial is Risking even one's very life. Take up the cross. Follow Jesus. Take up the cross every day. Don't be ashamed to say that you love him. Count the cost. Take up the cross, follow him. Love, love that song from Ray Bolt that, that expresses this very scripture so well. To take up your cross has nothing to do with putting up with the little hardships that we face as Christians. No, no, no. We often say, oh, that's just my cross to bear. Uh, um, when Jesus uses the word cross, he is speaking specifically about a Roman cross, a torture instrument for crucifixion. To take up the cross meant certain painful death. Are you willing to give your life for this, Jesus was saying. The shame of hanging on a cross. The physical pain. Jesus was saying, are you willing to die for this? It's going to be rough. There, there, there are those who will seek your life because of the choice you have made. Seek to take your life from you. Are you in? Deny yourself. Take up your cross. And then the third, the third action word. 
the last part is probably the most difficult, and that is follow. Follow me. To follow is not a passive action like following someone on Facebook or Instagram, just being aware of what they're doing. No, no, no. Following is the act of listening to the instructions, not just following along, but doing what is taught. Yes, the disciples would follow Jesus wherever he went, literally follow him from town to town, be with him. They would sleep outdoors with just a stone for a pillow. They would surround Jesus as a great crowd would press in on him. Gladly, though, it meant seeing the miracles up close and firsthand that Jesus would perform. Jesus performed great miracles. To follow was both a privilege and a danger at the same time. Let me tell you about that. To be seen with Jesus meant if they were after Jesus to trip him up, they were after you as well. Jesus was trying to prepare the disciples for what was to come. He spoke plainly about how he would go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the Jewish leaders and ultimately how he would be killed there. Peter didn't want to hear this. He didn't like hearing this. Peter wanted to help Jesus move away from that thought. So Peter spoke up. This was unthinkable to Peter, unacceptable, not possible. No, no, Peter was saying. How could this be the plan I do like the part where it says that Peter took Jesus aside. Did you hear that? Took him aside to talk it out. It is a, a good practice when working things out with someone. Take them to the side first. Don't call them out publicly initially. Give privacy when confronting someone to the side, away from others, just the two of you. Talk it out. It is best to go aside first, one-on-one. -on -one. That's the biblical way to handle things, by the way. What Jesus says to Peter must have cut him to the core, cut Peter to the core, must have felt like a, a, a punch in the gut. When Peter asserted that Jesus must not suffer and die, Jesus responded, what did he say? Get behind me, you Satan. Jesus was telling Peter that he was a hindrance at this point. To what he was trying to do. There, there is a divine plan and purpose at work here. And, and, and stop trying to stop me from fulfilling what I must do. This is what Jesus was saying to Peter. <clears throat> this must happen. The very plan of salvation is at stake. This is how it's going to be, Peter. Peter must have been I, I, dumbfounded, shocked, confused, e even hurt that Jesus would speak to him this way. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I actually like what Jesus said to Peter <clears throat> It is powerful. 
it is scriptural to use the phrase, get behind me, Satan, is a powerful scripture to use. I, I say it when I'm driving past Dunkin' Donuts. For the second time, I've already circled around because I went by, I was driving too fast to stop. And I say to myself, oh, my diabetes is doing fine at this point. I, I can get a donut, no harm, no problem. I'll even say, I'll get some for Cindy too. Next thing I know, I have a full dozen of donuts, all my favorites, not hers, lined up in the box ready to go. And another one. I've already eaten one without even thinking about it. And then another one's in my hand. Now, now when I pass by Dunkin' Donuts, do you know what I do? I hold my hand up. And I say the words, get behind me, Satan. Not today. Not today, Satan. In Scripture, it was Jesus that used the phrase, get behind me, Satan. Jesus needed to say these words. He was being tempted in the wilderness. Do you remember that? He also said, it is written... That's a good phrase to remember, too. When you say it is written, you need to remember what is written. Like, get behind me, Satan. Remember the Word of God. To remember the Word of God, you need to read the Word of God. And to read the Word of God and take in the Word of God, you need to be connected, connected with people that will hold you accountable in that. You need to be in in church, in fellowship, to draw strength from one another. Remember our text from today. Remember the phrase that saves, get behind me, Satan. Everybody just say that out loud. Just say it with me. Get behind me, Satan. We see what seems good. But God sees what is best. Peter loved Jesus. That's where this was coming from. It came from a place of love. He did not want to see Jesus harmed or, or heaven forbid, killed. Jesus knew he came to earth for just that purpose. To make the sacrifice to die in our place, to fulfill the prophecy of the suffering servant, Messiah, from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Peter tugged at the heart of Jesus, showing such deep concern and love for him. But Jesus, <clears throat> he, he refused to be, give in to that. He knew what he must do. The last verse of our text speaks of the last days. The last days. When the Son of Man would come with his angels and final judgment will take place. Until that day, <clears throat> one question remains. Are you willing Are you willing to lose your life in order to save your life? Are you willing to deny yourself, take up your cross, follow? The sacrifices you make will make all the difference. So stand up, step up, take on the work of the church in telling others about Jesus. And to that, all God's children say amen. Say amen, everyone. Amen. And uh, we will prepare ourselves now for Holy Communion. Follow along, the words will be on the screen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. We fell into sin. And when we did, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people, Israel, and spoke through the prophets and teachers. And in Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who called you Abba, Father. And as a mother tenderly gathered her children, you embraced us, your people, and filled us with a longing for peace that would last and a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering death, you took upon yourself sin and death and destroyed its power forever. You raised from the dead in this same way, Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured out your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. <clears throat> On the night which he met with death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim now together the mystery of faith. Together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And our prayer, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them the way that we know your presence of the living Christ. May we be renewed as the body of Christ for the world redeemed by his blood. And as a grain and grapes, once dispersed into the fields, are now united with the table. So may we fill, be filled and your people be gathered in every time and every place and in unity for eternal household, a feast at your heavenly table. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And those who will be helping, please come.
I remind you that you need not be a member of this church or of the United Methodist Church, but all those desiring to live a life according to the example of Christ are welcome here. It is to the Lord Jesus Christ that you respond when you come and receive his body, his blood. Hold your hand open to receive the bread into your hand. Uh, take the cup and uh, uh, take the bread and cup at the same time. Spend time at the uh, communion rail if you would like to spend some time in prayer. That's always appropriate. And, and uh, come taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us receive Holy Communion. Of Christ for you, Paul. Yep, like you and one touch. Body of Christ. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ for you, Dylan. Body of Christ, Joy. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ, Bob. Body of Christ for you, Jerry. Body of Christ, Marilyn. Body of Christ for you, Ben. Body of Christ. Body of Christ for you, Don. Body of Christ for you, Sue. Body of Christ, Ben. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ, Nancy. Body of Christ, Stephen, for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ for you, Lord. Body of Christ, Jim, for you. Body of Christ, Bruce, Jim. Body of Christ, Diane. Body of Christ, Jim.
Let's uh, stand together and sing our closing hymn. Hymn number 338, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. <clears throat> Think about what it might cost you to serve Jesus this week. Some of your time, some of your efforts, some prayer for someone else. Spending time with someone who's hurting. Meeting the need of someone who just is struggling. Whatever that sacrifice is, make it gladly. Deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow him. To that we all say an amen. Say amen, everyone. Amen. And God bless. <clears throat>